Welcome to GreenBiz Studio. I'm Deanna Anderson, Associate Editor at GreenBiz, and I'm speaking with Maeve Troth, Energy, Climate, and Renewable Supervisor at Steelcase. Hi, Maeve. Hi, Deanna. All right, so let's just jump right in. I'm really excited to talk to you. Uh, Steelcase recently set a goal to become carbon negative by 2030. I'm curious about what that means for the company and also how you're planning to get there. Yeah, so we really set out thinking about setting new targets in 2020 as our existing GHG targets for retiring, thinking about a lot of different things, right? The market was changing, the ESG rating agencies environment was changing. Um, we were building upon our past progress and these sort of historical achievements that we've made in this realm. And we know that the crime, climate crisis is really upon us. And so really thinking about all of these different elements brought us to the point of reconsidering where we were going with setting greenhouse gas emissions targets, which is the primary component of our carbon initiative that was recently launched. We weren't really able to or ready to make the commitment to becoming carbon negative until after the point at which we had achieved those absolute reductions in line with climate science, which is why we really coordinated with our setting of science-based targets and our target to achieve carbon negativity by 2030. That said, we still wanted to do something today, which is why we advanced our renewable energy commitment and became carbon neutral this year. And we're gonna really use that carbon neutral commitment to keep incentivizing further absolute reductions in greenhouse gas emissions over this time horizon or this next decade. Um, and we think that will really put us in a really good place to become carbon negative by 2030. Amazing. So you're, you're on this track to get to that goal. I'm curious about uh, what are the biggest challenges so far in trying to reach that? For sure. Yeah. So setting the targets is a big challenge. I think any company who has set science-based targets and have made these commitments understands how comprehensive of a development process that is and all of the internal buy-in that you need in order to push those targets forward and the external review and validation process. Um, but for us now moving post-launch into implementation, one of the biggest challenges that we're facing is that these are really aggressive, ambitious commitments. It's a 50% reduction from current levels extending out to 2030. So over the past decade, even though we've exceeded our 25% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions reductions, we're now looking at a 50% reduction, which is a little bit daunting. And so the way that we're deciding to go about that is to start identifying those opportunities by enlisting external consultants to help us ad identify them through energy efficiency audits, um, which is gonna be a really big help for our top emitting facilities. Additionally, I think the other really interesting component of setting science-based targets is we now also have scope three targets, which is the first time our company has done that. And so it's a huge step in the right direction, but it's also a big challenge for us because we haven't done it before. And so right now we're figuring out how to engage our supply chain and to really achieve that supplier engagement tar target of an 80% um, commitment from our supply chain of purchase goods and services and transportation and distribution suppliers to set their own science-based targets by 2025. And that will seriously be a big lift for us. Yeah, that sounds like a huge lift. And I think uh, lots of companies are thinking about their scope three emissions more now. So I'm excited that you all are doing that too. Um, so I'm curious if you have advice for other companies or organizations that are trying to reach similar targets like the one that you are, that you, that we've been talking about. I think it's really figuring out why it makes sense for your company to be thinking about these targets and then how to go about setting them. So again, for us, I think we were fortunate that we've had this really long-standing commitment to sustainability. We've had greenhouse gas emissions targets in the past. We've advanced our tracking and reporting over the last couple of years of our own facilities and processes, which makes it a little bit simpler to go about really crafting what the science-based target um, should look like, but really thinking about those external and internal motivations. So again, as, as we were drafting these goals, we were thinking about 
market forces that were changing, our customers' expectations, the investor community's expectations that were changing, the regulatory uncertainty, and then thinking about how we could use all of that to sort of motivate this internal decision-making process to better prepare ourselves for this carbon-constrained economy, which we know that we're entering into, we're already living within, um, but that we're now starting to see the impacts of. And so I think that for any company seriously considering setting science-based targets or making these commitments to become carbon negative, it's thinking about how those external and internal motivations are working together and making the environmental case for setting ambitious targets and initiatives in the space, but then also the business case. That sounds like sound advice to me. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Maeve. Um, and thank you for joining GreenBiz Studio. Thank you so much, Deanna. You just heard from Maeve Trope, Energy, Climate, and Renewables Supervisor at Steelcase. Thank you for tuning into GreenBiz Studio.